A few months ago, I uploaded a video about the open source project CinePie, a cinema camera that you can build using both off the shelf and custom parts. If you haven't seen the video, I highly recommend pausing this one and watching it first to get a better context of what we'll be assembling today. I'm going to be assembling a very bare bones version of the CinePie to show anyone interested in getting started with the hardware and software. The software configuration I'll be using is called CinePie V2 by Schoolpost, as it's the simplest to get going with minimal setup. But first, this video wouldn't have been possible without PCBWay. Whether you're a professional engineer or a DIY electronics enthusiast, PCBWay is your go-to place for high quality PCB and assembly services. From prototyping to full-scale production, PCBWay has you covered. With their advanced PCBs, CNC machining, and 3D printing services, plus their PCB assembly services, which connects you with over 100 component vendors to make sure you get exactly what you need. So make sure you check the link below. Not only because PCBWay offers great services, but also because from January 1st to January 12th, PCB Way is running some insane promotions that you don't want to miss. We're talking up to 50% off PCB assembly orders, free themed prototypes, exclusive coupons ranging from five to $200. And if that wasn't enough, they've got this super cool unboxing blind boxes activity where you can get surprise modules or gifts. So if you're planning tech projects to kick off the new year, now's the perfect time to hit up PCB Way's promotion page and take advantage of these amazing deals. We'll start with the brain of the camera, the Raspberry Pi 4B 8 gig model. While you can use the 4 gig model, the 8 gigs of RAM acts as a better buffer for slower SSDs when recording. But we still don't recommend you use a slower SSD. To ensure our Pi stays cool, I recommend adding some small heat sinks since CinePi software overclocks the Pi. Keeping it cool is crucial for optimal performance. Next we're going to set up our IMX 477 Pi HQ camera module. It's straightforward, I recommend buying the official model as I've had issues with the Articam versions. Gently lift the retention arm and insert the ribbon cable with the blue tab facing towards the USB ports. Be gentle to avoid breaking the cable. We'll have the screen next. We'll be using the Hyperpixel 4.0 Touch 700x700 700 700 square display. If you buy the screen, make sure to get the Touch square model with the extender, as 700x700 700 700 is the supported resolution for CinePi V2 software and is hard-coded to work with only a 700x700 700 700 display. Simply install it on the GPIO headers. You could try other 700x700 700 700 touch displays, but your results may vary. This one has been tested to work reliably. If you're not using a battery bank, you can add a power board, which I'll link in the description. This board allows you to power the Pi using 12 volt DC, use it with an MPF battery, and many come with cooling fans. You can actually swap this one out for a quiet or knock to a fan if you prefer and know how to do the conversion. Load the CinePi V2 pre-configured Linux image onto a micro SD card, which I'll link in the description. Insert your card into your PC, download and open Pi Etcher, choose your SD card and image file, and hit run. And while that's running, let's go ahead and install our lens. I recommend installing the 16mm f1.4 prime lens from Arducam, which you can find linked in the description. However, any C mount or any CS mount lens will work. I only recommend this lens in particular because it's a relatively high quality lens for the money, but you can find tons of cheap lenses on the open market, and even some zoom lenses if that's what you're looking for. Okay, now that our uh, Pi etching is done, let's go ahead and insert it into our Raspberry Pi. Now once that's all said and done, you're going to go ahead and plug in your battery bank or your NPF battery if you did get a power board, and just plug that right into the USB-C or barrel jack of your Pi. You should see some flashing on the screen. That's actually normal, don't worry about it. And there you go, the camera's on. Look at that. Now that your CinePi V2 is up and running, you can actually add a USB SSD or other fast storage for recording, but make sure it can sustain the right speeds to avoid any issues. For any more information on how to use this software, there is an extensive guide on the actual GitHub for the CinePi V2. At the bottom, you've got your ISO, your FPS, your shutter angle, and your white balance. At the top, you've got your exposure to the left, your resolution, and your recording format, as well as any stats like voltage and temperature. And then you got your big old record button, and in the center you've got your disk info and your time code. If you do a little swipe on the screen that'll allow you to actually bring up the extra controls like your lock control, your clip browser, and your settings. You can open up your settings here and you'll notice you have options to format your disk, eject it, change your resolution, and change your compression and of course shut down the system which if you're going to shut down i recommend doing because you can act if you just pull power you can actually uh ruin your cinepi installation so i'm gonna recommend not doing that your clip browser while it doesn't have any way to play back the footage it does let you know how many frames 
and lets you know what files are in there. For a final note, as of recording, the software is in alpha stage with 2K resolution modes working best. Future versions will bring more features, and if you're adventurous, you can build a Pi 5 version which supports 4K using Cinefox's guide, which allows you to use your phone as a touch monitor. Link in the description. You will need to install additional experimental drivers for 4K. Thanks for sticking around. If you enjoyed the video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe because we got some exciting CinePy projects coming up that you won't want to miss. Trust me, there's some cool stuff that involves CinePy in 2025. Hit the notification bell so you're the first to know when the next CinePy video drops. But anyways, you can go ahead and do all the stuff like watch the last video on Cinepie or the video I did on how to make a retro camcorder record to SD cards. That's it. Bye.